inspiration. A foundation still important today, the process of sharing words strung together that help point out the way, the many voices within each page. Turn pages from the past that resonate with you today. Turn pages today that create an escape within your mind. Turn pages that express a treasure within your tomorrow. Turn pages that hold a future for you to follow. We are Turning Pages. Good morning, my name is Senator Cherie Buckner-Webb. and I'm so delighted we're in the Idaho State Capitol because I served here for 10 years, for four years in the House and six years in the uh, Senate. It was a great time and I was the first and only to this time black female to serve in the Idaho legislature. Uh, my grandfather is the founder of the first black church in Idaho and builder of the first uh, building, the church edifice, not just to have a congregation right here in Idaho. That building now serves as the Idaho Black History Museum. I'm really proud of it. So the building's about 100 years old now. Um, my other side of the grandparents uh, came from Arkansas one by one with the railroad and to find good jobs and to farm and to ranch and all that kind of thing. So all those deep roots helped me get to this place so many years later. Because I have deep roots, we are, and there are few black people here. It was real easy to have uh, the opportunity to know people in all walks of life because they say, oh yes, you're that black family that lives on 19th Street, or you're that black family that lives on Bannock. It was to my great advantage. Um, people could remember me readily. In fact, the first time I ran for office was in uh, junior high and then later in high school. And I remember when I ran for treasurer, I ran a year earlier than you were supposed to. You had to be a senior to be a, a student body officer. I said, my name's Cherie Buckner Webb. I can add, subtract, and multiply. I hope you'll vote for me because I realized when you cut to the chase, you've got to know what the value proposition is for the folks that are going to vote for you. And they didn't want to sit in that uh, assembly forever and hear me talk trash about all the wonderful things I'm going to do, realizing we weren't going to do much at all as uh, uh, student body officers. I got elected, then I got hot. I ran and ran and ran and ran and ran, and then ultimately I was invited to run for uh, legislature. So. The beauty of being one of few in the state of Idaho was everybody said, there's that black family. They, a, they knew my dad who had been a referee. They knew my mom who had been a civil rights activist. They knew uh, my brother who was a jock. They're, they remembered the black kids because we were so few. And so instead of being a deficit to me, it was um, a value proposition. It was a, a key component of my getting elected that people remembered who I was. 5,000 people during election time are knocking on doors and they say, I'm this, I'm this, I'm this, and nobody remembers you, but hey, I was the only black person knocking on the door. They said, she could conjugate a verb, let's, let's, let's get her in. This is a book that I really love. I am enough, and I learned that at an early age from the people in my family. I know that we don't look the same, our skin, our eyes, our hair, our frame, but it does not dictate our worth. We can have both have places here on earth, both of us. And in the end, we're right, we're enough, we're exactly right, we're exactly where we're supposed to be. I was surrounded by a lot of old folks. I had grandparents and great-grandparents living close to us. I had aunts and uncles, and I loved hearing their stories. I sat at their knee, not because they asked me to, but I loved hearing the stories. My grandfather used to tell me when we'd go for rides on Sunday afternoon, you'd see an outhouse in the middle of a field and he goes, see that, that's, that's, that's valuable. You need to buy property. No matter what you do, buy property, an outhouse. And so everybody in the family, the running joke was, Cherie's gonna buy an outhouse. I will tell you that um, starting when I was 28 years old, I bought my first house. It was difficult. Um, I had just gotten divorced, but I got a house. I worked extra jobs. I learned how to caulk and fill and hammer and paint and all that, but Grandpa's thing was buy property. And then I learned, really, not from his, not from his language, but from my mother saying, understand that um, property was not available to black folks for a long, long time. We weren't allowed to buy property. We didn't have the opportunity. In fact, the house that we lived in on North 19th uh, when I was a child, my folks moved to North 19th. Um, somebody, somebody burned a cross in our front yard 
about a year after we'd moved in. And my mother's response to that was, they're late, we've been here a long time. This is our neighborhood now, and we're not moving out. So listening to my old folks, learning the lessons without them saying, now listen, you must do this, you must do that. Grandpa was kind of being funny by saying, go buy that outhouse. But he was saying that any property has value if you can see the value in it. And so that's been one of my life scripts. The Johnson side taught me that you cannot speak the same way as others do. You have to be at a higher level when there's a lot of little white kids that are connected in a whole lot of different ways and are accepted just because of who they are, just because of who I am, being the only black one. I had to be sure that I had good grades, that I had good manners, and that I was respectful. So I learned a lot of things by demonstration and by um, direct contact with my relatives. I've talked about my family, I've talked about my time in the legislature, but I want to tell you I've had 50 different lives and opportunities, and often I wasn't looking for them, they just came up and when the chance comes to do something, even that you think you can't possibly do, take a chance. I was, I was able to sing with jazz greats all over the world. I was able to go to work um, scheduling airplanes, jet airplanes, I'd never been on a jet airplane. I got to do that, I went to work in Mexico. I worked in Europe, all those things, a little colored girl growing up in Boise, Idaho. If you take the chance and not, and not limit yourself by saying, I've never done that before. When I say I've never done it before, I mean it, and I'm willing to try. I'm Senator Cherie Buckner-Webb, and this is my story. My final note would be, ain't gonna let nobody turn me round, turn me round, turn me round. Ain't gonna let nobody turn me round. You're gonna keep on walking, keep on talking, working till the break of day. We stem from simple memorization, memories of the epic odysseys that allowed the blind to see and freely roam, aspirations of a hero's return home, pictures painted, whether full of truth or slightly fabricated, haunted by mystery and a dream, the scheme to reveal a message, a moral learned, a choral serene, large enough to leave a mark on the hearts of those who open their ears to hear the underlying theme, inspiration. A foundation still important today, the process of sharing words strung together that help point out the way, the many voices within each page, the relationship between character and reader, storyteller, narrator, business owner to a teacher, musician, filmmaker, politicians and a variety of leaders, breeding braids and waves that weave tells web together to connect a community pages one by one are turning in unity over years from parchment and scroll to a bind we find new enlightenment from the old a gift from a mere book soup that warms the soul or an impact on a mind that seeks purpose a ripple from a pebble that dives under the surface from off the shelf we carry a compass, the blueprint of navigation to our circumference. With wisdom at the steering wheel, we will always feel accomplished. Peel back the cover, discover the scent of borrowed time, turn pages from the past that resonate with you today, turn pages today that create an escape within your mind, turn pages that express a treasure within your tomorrow, turn pages that hold a future for you to follow. We are turning pages.